Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Elixir Czech Republic Friday Coffees, which is a series of lectures where we are presenting the tools, data sets, and other services which are developed at the Elixir Czech Republic. If you are interested about uh, designing a protein, so I think you are in the right place in the right time, because Miloš Musil from Loschmidt Laboratories at ICRC uh, will tell us about the FirePro which is quite interesting tool for the design of stable proteins uh, developed at the Loschmidt Laboratories. And I would ask Miloš to just start. So Miloš, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as was already mentioned, I'm from Loschmidt Laboratories and I will tell you actually not only about FireProd, but about uh, several tools from the FireProd family. So to start, let's start with a little bit of motivation. Why would you actually want to design more stable proteins? The main reason is that the stable proteins are actually able to survive in high temperatures. They are able to withstand more unfavorable uh, environmental conditions like higher uh, pH, and they are actually able to survive in the presence of some therapeutic agents. And we are also able to shelve them for the prolonged period of time, so we can increase the their livability uh, freezer from several weeks to even months or years. Uh, the last important uh, fact is that the stable proteins are more resilient to mutations. This is important uh, during the course of evolution, as uh, when the proteins are uh, evolving, they are uh, to withstand uh, many mutations to get from the past to current days. And the more stable proteins are actually able to survive those mutations without losing their function or uh, falling apart. Uh, so, uh, in the ideal case, we would, uh, of course, want to uh, design those stable mutants in that way that we would try all the possible combinations in the lab, but this is not really feasible. So, in the last about two, de two decades, uh, many of the tools were created to actually help with the prioritization of mutations in the lab. Uh, some of them are using the more physical way, so uh, the force field metals, some of them are based on evolution. And probably the most common is are the tools that are based on machine learning. Uh, problem with those tools is that they usually serve only for the design of single point mutations. And if you design pro, uh, muta mutants with only one mutations, you will usually not achieve a very high improvement in protein stability. So what we, you would try, what you should try to do is to construct uh, multiple point mutants. In here, there's a problem that uh, you might face some antagonistic effects. That means that if you combine several mutations in one mutant, then uh, those mutations might uh, somehow clash between each other and uh, you might actually uh, dam damage the protein stability instead of improving it. So for that, uh, we have designed a fireproof method, uh, which is a hybrid method that is using uh, two separate branches and two separate approaches. Uh, one approach is based purely on the energy. Uh, that means that we are using uh, force fields to predict the protein stability. The second approach is then based on evolution. Uh, most namely, we are using uh, back to consensus method. Uh, we are utilizing both uh, sequence and structural information. So, for example, we are using uh, conservation and correlation uh, analysis to filter some mutations out at the beginning of the analysis. I will also talk about it later. And uh, at the end, we are providing three separate designs. Uh, one is a design based purely on the force field, one is based on the evolution, and one is combination of both. And as with most of our tools, we are also providing users with interactive user interface where, can, where, where they can see all the design mutations and visualize them directly on the protein structure. So as I have mentioned, uh, we have two separate branches. One is energy and one is evolution based. At the beginning, user has to provide us only with uh, the protein printing structure. Uh, from this structure, we exclude all the residues that are close to the active site, so we would not damage the protein function. And then we proceed with the analysis of the conservation, cons uh, conserved and correlated positions. And we also remove uh, those positions from the further analysis 
because we presume that if the if some position is conserved or, or correlated, then it's somehow important for the function of the protein or its holding or stability or something like that. And we don't want to uh, touch this. Uh, then we also exclude all the mutations that would uh, cause the change of the charges on the surface of the protein, because we have noticed that the force field methods often uh, like remove charges on the surface of the protein, and this usually leads for the that the protein is uh, unable to fold then in the lab. So we also not allow these kind of mutations. And then with the positions and mutations that are left, we proceed with the fast uh, foldix evaluation, uh, and then from we collect the mutations that are predicted by foldix as potentially stabilizing, and then we evaluate them again with Zeta with more robust force field calculation, and all then all the mutations that are predicted as stabilizing as by Zeta, uh, we uh, have we try to combine them together, but of course we cannot really combine those mutations together blindly. Uh, because there might be some of those antagonistic effects. And we, again, cannot really evaluate all the possible combinations of mutations because that would be very time demanding. So what we are doing is that we are we try all the, all the pairs of the mutations, and then we try to combine those pairs of the mutations that do not have any uh, antagonistic effects between them. And from this, we construct a multiple point mutant that is based on the energy. In the evolution branch, we are starting with back to consensus analysis. That means that we are looking on the conserved positions in the protein. And if we notice that the, uh, in our query sequence, there's a different amino acids that is uh, dominant in this column of the multiple sequence alignment, we are trying to revert uh, the amino acid on this position from the one that is in query to the one that is most dominant in this column at alignment. Uh, this usually leads to some improvement in the protein. It doesn't always have to be stability. It can be also other characteristics like activity or solubility, but very often it's uh, actually the stability. So just to evaluate uh, the mutations that are designed by back to consensus, we just quickly evaluate them with foldates, and then we again proceed with the multiple point mutant design that is based on evolution. And once we have uh, those two uh, multiple point mutants, we again try to evaluate all the possible pairs of mutations between uh, the mutations that are in energy and that are in the evolution branch, and we try to combine them together in one combined mutant. As I have mentioned, we are providing also the interactive user interface. You can see here that we are visualizing all the possible mutations that were designed by all those three, uh, all, uh, in all of those three designs, that mean design that is based on energy evolution and also on the combination of both. And you can actually visualize all those mutations directly on the protein structure. And we also allow users to somehow update those designs so they can remove some of the mutations or add some of the mutations uh, by, uh, that, they, that they have designed by themselves. So that's all for Fireprot. And we now move to ancestral sequence reconstruction. So uh, what is ancestral sequence? Ancestral sequence reconstruction. Uh, basically, the idea is that you collect the proteins that you can find in current days, and then based on their sequences, you try to uh, predict how the proteins looked in the past. Uh, why we would want to do this is that uh, it was found that those ancestral proteins are actually often more stable, and there are two main ideas why this might so be so. Uh, one idea is that the conditions on Earth were much more harder in the past, so proteins have to be more stable to actually survive those conditions. The second idea is that uh, mutations have, uh, that the proteins had to withstand uh, many mutations during the course of evolution, and they actually had to be more stable to uh, survive all these mutations uh, that they had to endure. Nevertheless, uh, even though the Ancestral sequence reconstruction was designed, I think, in the 70s. And since then, it was shown that it's a very reliable method uh, when it comes to the construction of the stable proteins. Problem is that uh, you have to actually go through many steps uh, before you can proceed with ancestral sequence reconstruction. You need to collect the set of homologue sequences. You need to construct multiple sequence alignment. You need to construct the tree. You need to read this, root this phylogenetic tree. And after all of this, you can proceed with ancestral sequence reconstruction, for which you also need to reconstruct ancestral gaps. And all of this requires, uh, requires a lot of expert knowledge. 
you need to have uh, knowledge of the system you are working with and also uh, you need to know a lot of bioinformatics tools that would help you with this analysis and for this uh, we have designed a pyrot asr which is the workflow for fully automated ancestral sequence construction uh, that should help you with all those steps that i have mentioned before so it, it will help you to uh, collect the sequences, create the data set, construct the MSA tree, and then proceed with ancestral sequence reconstruction. All is fully automatic, so there is no need for input from the side of the user. And as with uh, most of our tools, we are providing also the interactive user interface that will allow you to visualize the proteins, the phylogenetic tree, and also design new uh, ancestors. If you look on, it, on this method a little bit deeper, it can be split it into the three parts. In the first part, we need to collect the biologically relevant homolog sequences. For this, we are using enzyme that not only collects the homolog sequences based on their sequence identity, but it also checks if the catalytic residue, if those homolog sequences actually have same or similar catalytic residues. But of course, this will uh, always collect uh, hundreds or even thousands of sequences, uh, which is quite a lot. So we need to reduce this initial data set. We are removing all the sequences that are quite long or short. We are also removing the sequences with high or low sequence identity. We then also cluster those sequences and pick only one sequence from each of those clusters. So we have enough sequence uh, diversity in our, in our initial data set. And uh, with this, we are usually left with a few hundred of sequences, which is still a lot. So we create an uh, initial phylogenetic tree using just a neighbor joining algorithm, which is quite fast. And then we re uh, reduce this uh, phylogenetic tree by trimming it using the trimmer software. So basically, we are iteratively trimming the leaves of this phylogenetic tree by uh, uh, while keeping its sequence diversity. Once we reduce this data set to the more reasonable size, about 150 sequences, uh, we then construct a multiple sequence alignment. Uh, we construct a more robust phylogenetic tree using the maximum likelihood algorithm. And then uh, we need to root this tree. For this, we are using so-called minimum ancestral deviation algorithm that was published about a year ago in Nature, I think. And uh, once we root this tree, we then again use maximum likelihood to construct ancestral sequences. And then we also proceed with the reconstruction of ancestral gaps for which we are using our own uh, newly designed algorithm. So with all of this, we are able to uh, design the ancestral sequences and provide uh, them to the users with the interactive user interface that you can see here. Again, we are providing a 3D visualization of the design proteins. We are providing phylogenetic tree visualization, also the visualization of multiple sequence alignment of all the homologs and design ancestrals. That's not actually shown in here. And we also, you can also check the posterior probabilities for any of the designed ancestrals. We are designing all the ancestrals in the phylogenetic tree, which means that you can actually pick any node in the phylogenetic tree and uh, see the ancestral that was designed by all fully automatic methods. And this is all without any input required from the side of the user. Finally, uh, when I move away from the Firefox ASR, I would also mention the newest child in the Firefox family, which is Firefox DB. And this is the database that serves for the storage and maintenance of the protein stability data. Currently, we store slightly over 15,000 experiments that were collected from the various uh, other data sets and new literature. And as with other tools, we are also providing users with the interactive user interface where he can find various statistics. We are, have some uh, visualizations. That means visualization for both sequence and structural features that users can use for, for example, training of their machine learning tools. And we are also providing advanced search with which uh, users can actually interactively create uh, subsets of our Firefox DB database. When I have also mentioned the machine learning tools, a problem with current machine learning tools for protein stability data was that they were, their accuracy was quite limited by the available data that were strongly unbalanced, that they have bad diversity and so on. So the recent studies shown that all, most of those tools suffer with very high uh, level of overtraining. And uh, we would want to use the fact that we have now a lot of available data 
to train our own machine learning system. And for this, we would want to create some multi-agent system that would be combine some general predictors or with some specialized predictors that would be trained specifically for different types of computations. And we would also want to create some more specialized predictors that would be dealing with uh, more problematic cases. Uh, this is, for example, when I have mentioned that uh, force field methods are actually not able to really deal well with uh, charges on the surface of the proteins. That in that, so for this, we would want to create some more specialized predictors that would be able to deal with these kind of mutations in our multi-agent system. So this is uh, for the future. Uh, we would want to create some system like this some sometime later uh, this year. And uh, with this, I will move to the end. So just to summarize everything, uh, stable proteins are very important for both industrial and biotechnological applications as they are able to withstand uh, many unstable environments like higher temperatures or pH. And we are providing users with uh, tools uh, from the Fairfield family that should help them with the design of uh, stable multiple point mutants. Also, uh, they provide one stop shop, one -stop -shop full solution for ancestral sequence construction. And now uh, users are able to also obtain uh, already experimental, very verified uh, protein stability data using the Fairfield DB database. So that's all from my side. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any uh, questions, I will gladly answer them. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. And we already have a few questions. So the first is, does it involve coevolution? It means correlation of residues in multiple sequence alignments? Uh, yes, in FireProd, we are actually checking for the for this coevolution. And we are trying not to touch those mutations because we are expecting that uh, they, uh, if we would uh, create some mutations on this position, it might cause some issues. However, in the next version of the Firefox that we are uh, planning to release, uh, we would also want to check on those mutations and, for example, try to design those uh, correlated mutations. Okay. The second question, which I think is very interesting, how would tools perform on a completely de novo design protein? Uh, you mean like if you would not have a 3D structure? I don't know. It's Vojta's Spivok, but I think you probably have the 3D structure, but something which is completely unrelated to uh, any kind of the uh, other proteins. Uh, so completely de novo design. And if you would like to, for example, try to stabilize it more, so how it will proceed? I would expect that it really depends how uh, well uh, the, for example, for silk methods are able to deal with this uh, because we are quite limited uh, with the uh, by the uh, by the accuracy of the force field methods when it comes to the evolution branch. So I'm not sure how well Rosetta is able to deal with this, uh, but I think it should be able to. And plus we are also have the evolution analysis and it was shown that the evolution analysis is quite universal. So I think we should be able to pro uh, provide some reasonable designs. Avoida added that there is no structure and no similar sequence. So can you deal with okay. that? Okay. Yeah, that might be a problem because uh, that might be a problem for Fireprod because Fireprod is based only on the uh, structure. So if you are not able to provide the structure or construct your uh, model structure, then we are not able to proceed with Fireprod. With Fireprod ASR that is based on sequence, it might be viable if there are at least like similar sequences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have to be high sequence similarity, but if you are able to collect sequences with like, I don't know, 50, 60 percent sequence similarity or 40 percent, it should be fine for five days. OK, Peter Mann has a question. Is it better than PROSS, PROSS, which I don't know what is it? Uh, I cannot say if it's better than uh, now second version of PROS that was released, I think, a few months ago but uh, we get better results than the pros that was released i think in 2016 2017. okay and a question is possible to address the issue of enzymatic catalysis improvement because i noticed that you also focused on the let's say active sites of the enzyme so can you design and improve the catalytic efficiency uh, Fireprot is not uh, designed for this uh, we, are, we are focused on the stability of the protein so as I have shown in the 
uh, in the in here in the workflow. We are actually uh, removing the residues uh, that are close to the active sites from the further calculation. So uh, we should not uh, improve uh, the protein uh, activity by default, but we should not also damage it. So the uh, consequential question, so when you actually design the new protein with the higher stability, uh, does it improve also catalytic efficiency? Does it happen uh, at all? It might happen because we are also designing the second branch that is based on evolution. And since evolution often improves also other uh, characteristics, we actually might improve also the activity while improving the stability. This is for FireProt. Uh, when it comes to the FireProt ASR, uh, we have tested several uh, sequences that were designed by ancestral sequence reconstruction, and we have actually observed the improvement of the activity. Okay. So I see no other question. So Milo, thank you very much again. And uh, for each of you, uh, don't forget the uh, next Friday at the Alexia Friday Coffee again. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.